to Unpack the Day's Movements, we're joined by Makwe Masilela from Makwe Fund Managers. Makwe, thank you so much for joining us. Now, Northern Platinum sold its entire minority stake in Implats for over 3 billion rand. Would this tip the scale in the platinum sector? Most probably it will, and that's after selling that 34.5% stake that they had in Royal Bafkan Platinum, and they got nice uh, 9 billion or so, and that managed to benefit the shareholders of Northern Platinum. Remember, the guys then decided to declare a dividend. I think they'll be giving back almost 2.4 billion to their shareholders and also do a uh, share buyback of almost 1 billion. That is rewarding long-term shareholders. But the issue now with the whole sector is that prices are not okay when it comes to PGM because demand is not there. So up until the global economy starts doing well, turning around, then the likes of Northam should be benefiting going forward because they'll be having a very decent balance sheet and they'll be able to invest more when it comes to their current operations. Now we're staying with the miners. Sibanya Stillwater released interim results and they are citing lower commodity prices for their lower production and sales. Now how long can we still expect the miners across the board to be depressed for? I think for a nice 12 months or so, because we don't see the global economy picking up instead, we expect more of a soft lending. And a very soft lending is not going to necessitate the necessary demand. And also, with the biggest consumer of raw materials, which is China, continuing to struggle, then they're going to have a challenge going forward. Because we've just seen, as Banga said, you know, the slow global economy resulted in low demand when it comes to those commodities, as a result, affecting commodity prices other than gold. And for them, it's a gold production turnaround managed to help with the low PGM prices. And it's not surprising to see that their uh, revenue is down almost 13.9%. And with their profits, they settled in Espeche down a whopping 50.8%. So RCL Foods is now expanding their logistics business. What do you make of this? I, I think that's a good move. Remember, the guys have been with Victor Logistics since 2004. and 2021, the guys indicated that they need to reshape their portfolio. And now for them to sell their Victor Logistics for almost 1.2 billion, that's a good move for them. And as we saw that, other than that, the guys have just been struggling as RCL. And the buyers themselves, they're not new to South Africa. This will be their second investments, investment in South Africa. As in 2021, they uh, had a JV with Royanet, and that was more on renewable energy. So they know the industry. Mm. And in other logistic news, Mark, where Supergroup also reported a jump in annual profit. That's good news for them because we've seen that there have been some improvement, but the guys mainly benefited from the sales when it comes to their car dealerships in Africa, South Africa, and the UK. The guys, they've got almost 50 dealerships in South Africa and 43 in the UK. And anyway, not that they didn't have some challenges. We know they had to deal with high inflation. We know that they had to deal with shortages of product and also the war in Ukraine. But the results themselves, they just show you that the guys continue to be competitive because because they've managed to increase the market share. The guys also managed to win new contracts and also be able to renew the existing contracts. So not bad for them. And for them to see their profits as at any special going up by 23.3%, not too bad. And also the dividend per share being increased by just around 26.9%. And the overall financial performance, which is EBITDA, up also around 20%. I think the guys are on their way to recover. Mm. And then meanwhile in Japan, so a little bit further away from our market, the Toyota plant has grounded to a, st a halt after a system failure. Now a third of the global production is from this plant in Japan. Will this have a lasting impact? Is it maybe some positive news for the local market this side? You know, I don't think it will have a lasting impact because the guys have just managed to resume some of those plans and it was because of some glitch and fortunately it's not a cyber attack so they don't have to worry but we know the guys have been struggling with their output because i think they've just been producing around 29 percent or so and all because they had issues as well with semiconductors so the problem was going to be if it's going to be long lasting then definitely other plans if they have the capacity to be able to 
ramp up, then they were going to benefit. Because if they don't even have the capacity, say Toyota here in Tibet, to ramp up, then still don't be able to benefit from that as well. But as it is now, we don't have, uh, uh, expect any negative impact going forward because they've just restarted some of those plants. And then just lastly, Mark, what is your fuel price increase projection for next week? I think anything around 110 cent or so. <laughs> Great stuff. Thank you so much. That was Marque Masilelo from Marque Fund Managers. Now it's